Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's live stream. My name is Master Paul. Very happy to be with you today. It's a Wednesday. It is August 23rd, 2017, and hard to imagine we are five years beyond 2012, isn't it? We are moving quite rapidly into the soul light era, and that is the subject matter of today's live stream, how to let go of the mind and allow the soul to lead your life. A lot of us uh, believe that mind over matter is everything, that if you can control the mind, you can control everything. I'm here to break that paradigm and to create a new one. So if that sounds of interest to you, you're new, just checking in, I encourage you to watch the entirety of this live stream. <coughs> um, I am here live every day, Monday through Thursday, offering wisdom on the soul, how you can apply soul to transform every part of your life and reach highest layers of enlightenment. So if you are uh, interested in the subject matter, but you're not able to stick around for the entire time, I encourage you to uh, click on subscribe and like me, and uh, then you'll know when I go live and also you can um, come back to my Facebook page and watch anytime you want any of the recordings. Also listed above my video here is access to all my archives and my website, which has quite a bit more information regarding the soul journey. And if you're one of those people that needs a one-on-one -on -one, uh, coach or uh, you're going through significant suffering and you want some healing, um, I offer those services as well. So welcome to everyone that's joining. <clears throat> Yesterday was quite busy. We had a lot, a lot, a lot of activity. Uh, this whole week we have last week as well and uh, I think the subject matters are starting to resonate with people even more um, just recently I think it was last week uh, I taught on how and you're welcome to go back to my archives and access this <clears throat> how to get along with all those that are not okay with your spiritual awakening that was a very well received live stream almost 5,000 views and uh, a lot of the subjects that I touch on are about spiritual awakening. So I encourage all of you to join me for that. <clears throat> so let's acknowledge who's jumped in here today. So welcome Susan Birchmore, aloha Lisa Carter, welcome Ingeborg, aloha Jennifer and Pinto, aloha Ali, welcome also to Kristen Rojas, thank you Kristen for your service. Uh, oftentimes I'll, I'll mention something and then I'll say you can find the link if you follow Kristen Rojas's chat. She is my right hand. She's assisting me with almost everything. And so thank you, Kristen. You can find uh, most of the things I refer to in her chat boxes. Welcome, Abby Lynn. <clears throat> Aloha to uh, Dana Knapp. And welcome also to Candy Cornett and Roseanne Shouter trump Welcome also to Janice and uh, Roseanne. I said, just said that, yeah. Welcome, NNC. Aloha, Kathy Berger. Welcome, Amor de Gitano. I think I said that right, right? Degatana, Degatana. <laughs> I love trying to pronounce people's last names uh, correctly. Uh, not always easy. Welcome, Nelson. <clears throat> also, welcome to uh, Linda Jansen and Christine Marie. Welcome, Angel Hart. Aloha, Madrid. Welcome, Julie Lawrence. Welcome, Michelle Jamie Dodd. I'm Kristen Strachan. Welcome, Scott. Good to see you here on time, Scott. I know you have a tough schedule to be able to catch me on time. Welcome to Mellow Yellow. I haven't seen you here in a while. And also Patricia Johnson. So as we continue to gather steam, uh, getting, getting the uh, amount of people necessary to get the greatest value out of today's live stream, we're going to go ahead and connect heart to heart and soul to soul. Uh, again, for those that are new or newer, uh, this uh, is a time in all my live streams where I incorporate the source, Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. I'm a big fan of this song. I highly recommend it for de-stressing and for bringing love and peace and harmony into your life. And so you can learn more uh, at the links Kristen has put in her posts. Um, but we use it to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. So let us, uh, wherever we're at, sit up, place our hands, soul light, soul service, hand position, which is dropping left hand in front of the heart center, the right hand gently remain pointed towards heaven. And close your eyes, and I will call forth the beings of light that we can connect with and serve today. <clears throat> there are layers of the divine, the Tao, and the source, our beloved creator. You're the soul 
of uh, angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, gurus, lamas, Sikhu, saints, Buddhas, and bodhisattvas. We love you all, honor you all, appreciate you all, deeply respect you all. Our individual heavens teams, Gaia, James, and saints, beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, beloved Buddha, beloved Kuan Yin, we love you, honor, respect you deeply and greatly. We ask for your presence at this time. And whatever way is appropriate, and we ask for your assistance to guide each and every one of us to release that blockages and controls of the mind and allow for our soul to lead our life. <clears throat> Dear the source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls and all universes. We love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask most humbly and most sincerely for you to please come at this time. We ask the source, soul, song of love, peace, and harmony to please radiate its love to connect us heart to heart and soul to soul. And we invite all souls in all universes to join in this mantra as we offer this unconditional service. For all those that are new, this is a blessing. Uh, so you can make a request silently to heaven. Uh, everybody that would like to join to chant, you're welcome to join me. <coughs> Lula, 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 Right, run, run, I love all humanity, join hearts and souls together, love, peace, and harmony, love, peace, and harmony. Ha, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So again, if that song opens your heart, if it feels beautiful, I recommend you download it. The copyright has been removed. It is recommended you uh, share it with as many souls as possible. It is chanted in six continents and 43 languages. And so uh, it is an opportunity to bring love, peace, and harmony to humanity. So uh, also welcome to Kathy Arnold. <clears throat> welcome also to Nancy Lawson and Len de Leon. Welcome, San, Sally Render. Aloha Chris, to Chris Ezekiel. And welcome also to um, Nicola Craven. So thank you all for joining. Thank you all for hitting the share button and letting other people know about today's live stream. I have a feeling this will resonate with a lot of people. They would like to be able to move from their mind to their soul, but they're not quite sure how to make those steps. And so I'm going to start with a little education on the nature of soul and the soul light era. I have went into great detail on this. You can, uh, in, in Facebook, they actually have a search. I don't know if you know that, but most people just search a name. But actually, if you type in my name, Paul Fletcher, and then you type Soul Light Era, you can watch the entire uh, live stream I, I did on the Soul Light Era. I'm going to touch on it a little bit today. But in essence, what it refers to is the that we are all souls on a physical journey. And our purpose in this life is not to get stuck in the mind, <laughs> but a great deal of us are. Now, a lot of it <clears throat> is because of the control systems that are built into our societies, the, the telephone, the Internet, um, all of the sex on TV, all of the sex everywhere, um, all of the uh, fear-based news, the threat-based news. Um, there are many, many purposeful built-in control systems that keep our mind occupied. And they're purposeful because... They inhibit you from connecting to your soul. The soul is by far the most powerful instrument ever in all time. How do I know that? Very simple. Creator created our soul. 
Our soul lives forever. We do not. Our mind does not. And so anything you can do to reconnect to your soul is a very good thing. Uh, and the those that control the planet at this time do not want you to move from your mind to your soul. They love keeping you in your mind because that's where control is. But your job is not to uh, to support that. Your job is to awaken to your purpose and intention for being here. So in the soul light era, which started August 8, 2003, a great shift uh, began occurring in which we moved into a new era in which the soul is the boss. So your soul is the boss of your life. And this topic can go this I can talk this topic for an entire weekend, no problem. But we have to encapsulate this in a short period of time. So how do we move from the mind to the soul leading our life? We have to, in essence, unwind uh, that which brought about our soul uh, blockages and that which brought about our mind blockages. Now, there is an order in which things operate. And this order is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Soul, heart, mind, energy, matter. I've taught on this before. Also, you can check on that. This is another, uh, oh, great, it's backwards. Nice. So this camera actually sees it. I had to create this in reverse um, so that when I showed it on my telephone, it actually showed correct. But now I'm using my desktop <laughs> and I can actually show it straight and I don't have that ability to show it right now. Um, so soul, repeat, soul, my, excuse me, heart. So heart is below the soul. Mind, continue to repeat, soul, heart, mind, because when you repeat, you remember. Energy, matter, one more time. Soul, heart, mind, energy, matter. That is the order in which things actually work. So creator created souls long before they created your heart, your mind, your energy, and your matter. The soul is the boss. So in order to move to the soul, we have to disseminate. We have to release mind blockages. The mind blockages are disallowing you heart connection. They're disallowing you soul connection. So when we operate from the level of soul, the soul leads the heart. The heart then is able to lead the mind. The mind then is able to direct the energy, and the energy is able to direct the matter. So all of these are interconnected in many big and powerful ways. <clears throat> we are all souls, as indicated earlier, on a spiritual journey. But what happens is we come in, our um, our basically our previous lifetimes create a series of um, conditions in which we enter this life. It dictates who our parents are going to be, what our belief systems are going to be, uh, what kind of traumas and positive things are going to occur in our life, who will enter our life as our spouses and then leave our life potentially. All of who are kids, all of that's not 100% predetermined, but for the most part, predetermined by our karmic conditions. And so when we enter into this experience, we bring those karmic conditions in. Now, they work in a couple of different ways. We enter as a child, and so we don't, as a child, uh, uh, our mind is not developed. Our soul is actually very, very present at that point in time. So our soul is very open and pure. Our heart is open and pure. Our mind is not developed. But our karma is what brought our parents to us, which may be beautiful, loving parents that taught us very well, or maybe one good parent and the other one is a very unpleasant parent. It could be a combination of things which brought about building your personality, building your ego, which is step number two, which is releasing the ego. Step number one is opening the heart, but I'm leading you into this. So the ego is actually formed by the karma. The ego was brought about, in essence, by uh, the conditions in which your soul created in entering this life, which brought about all those people, places, things, conditions, teachings, wisdoms, belief systems, parents, all of that. And they caused you in your growing up years to formulate your personality, to formulate your ego. 
the ego is very deeply associated to the mind. And the mind, pretty much, unless your heart and soul connected, dictates your experiences. It dictates your responses to your experiences. It dictates your choice of, uh, of a thoughts, words, and actions. Your ego, your personality, is controlling a great deal of your life unless you're very heart and soul connected, okay? Um, what is the order? Soul, heart, mind, energy, matter. So we're going to bring in the subject of manifesting. Uh, it's not the subject matter for today, but we are all miniature creators. We are created in the likeness of our divine creator. We all have the abilities to create. Collectively, we are a conscious collectiveness, and therefore, when we all consciously as a human race uh, vote love, then all the darkness cannot exist. We literally will be in a much better place. But as I started out by talking, those that are controlling the planet is a very small number. Less than one half percent is controlling the entire planet. How are they doing it? Through the mind, of course. Do not let the, the extraordinary power of the soul ever be acknowledged or recognized or the darkness would not exist. So it's very simple when you break it down. You need to open your heart, connect to your soul, release the mind-based uh, uh, ego aspects and all of those things that keep us in our mind. So uh, we can do that consciously. We can do that by just turning off the television, okay? Choosing to only watch movies that are not violent or filled with blood, uh, taking those violent games away from our kids. Um, we have to make conscious choices um, to make a difference in our society and, and uh, the control of our minds. Uh, not listening or spending any time whatsoever on any of the threat-based stuff that they slather all over our television screens. These are some of the things that can cause you to move towards your heart, move towards your soul and away from uh, mind control. Now, maybe a good chunk of you, maybe half of you have already accomplished that. And if you have, congratulations, you're far along the path to uh, fully aligning to your soul. But there are probably half of us that are not. And so that's where you can start to move into those arenas. So let's see if there's anybody else I want to acknowledge or recognize coming in. Welcome also to Lisa Mathis. Welcome, Crane. Welcome, Crystal. Welcome, Carol Whitney. Uh, aloha to uh, Maria Franklin. Welcome, Zilki. And let's see, also, aloha and welcome, Ilona. Welcome, Liliana. And welcome, Michelle Grand. And also, uh, welcome to Victoria Lynn. And if there's anybody I missed, please forgive me. Welcome, Andy Marie. <coughs> so, the steps, step one through four. Now, these are very general steps. But, um, and it is, this is not a, uh, a race, guys. This is, this is a marathon. Your soul is forever. <laughs> not a race, a marathon. So how do you maintain the lead in this marathon? How do you keep the, the ahead of the path? You must make choices, not only for this life, but for every lifetime. Because your choices in this life impact the next lifetime, just like your choices of past lifetimes have brought to you the karmic conditions that have brought about both the wonderful things and the unpleasant things in this life. And so, um, step one, awaken your heart. I'll come back to these. Step two, release the mind blockages. What are mind blockages? Ego, negativity, negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative beliefs, ego, and attachments. These are mind blockages. Egos are all things personality. I am right, you're wrong. A person doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, attachments are, you know, I've got to watch my TV show. I'm sorry, but I just can't stay and watch you, Master Paul's my TV show. My, my soap opera is more important. Okay? These are attachments. Um, I got to have my ice cream after a meal. Attachments. Um, step three. Release the spiritual blockages, okay? So awaken the heart, release the mind blockages, and then we have to release the spiritual blockages because your soul is always in communication with you. 
but a lot of us have spiritual blockages. Now, a good chunk of them are in the heart, in the heart chakra, in the heart center. But there's also others in other parts of the energy spiritual vehicle. Uh, and step four, listen to your soul on a consistent basis and respond and do what your soul guides you to do. So what is the first step? Open the heart. Uh, very, very often in these live streams, I teach you practices for opening the heart. I walk you through meditations, I give you blessings. All of these are uh, all geared in a similar way to opening the heart. How do we close our heart? I can do a big teaching, big blessing, your heart's open, you're feeling nice and hunky-dory and fun, and you, you go off to work or, or get up next day and um, something happens and you close your heart again. What causes us to do something like that? Very often, it is the mind. <laughs> Interesting, right? It's the mind that causes us to close our heart. The mind says, this is right, this is wrong. The mind says, they shouldn't do that to me. Um, I'm a victim. The mind uh, gets upset a lot. And so that's why we have to break down the mind blockages. Now, heart blockages are also equally important to break down. They include greed, they include anger, they include a lack of heart-based wisdom. Uh, heart-based wisdom is wisdom of just how to treat each other with love and respect. Sometimes we, we simply make selfish choices. So in order to move from mind to soul, we have a little, a, a few mountains. To, to, to traverse here, okay? And that's why I say it's a marathon. It's not something that you're just gonna flick a switch, snap your fingers, and whoop, you move from the mind to the soul all in one, one hour live stream. Not gonna happen that way. Uh, but if you recognize the truth of this journey, if you recognize that you're toxic and tired, just fed up with the suffering of what this life uh, has delivered to you, and you further recognize that you, not I, not anybody you're pointing your finger at, but that you brought about, created, literally, all the conditions that you're fed up with. When you step into that role is when you can start this marathon and start leading the race instead of getting uh, left behind and constantly getting knocked around by all those that are passing you up. First step, opening the heart, okay? Opening the heart uh, is a process. Opening the heart <clears throat> is a daily step forward. Releasing mind blockages happens every day. These are things that we have to do consciously. Now, the beautiful part about this is you can watch this live stream every day and get a new aha. You can practice the suggestions every day and get a new aha. The biggest suggestion to release the blockages is to train with someone like myself. There's a, over a hundred master teachers uh, that, that, that work with this wisdom and uh, the guidance wisdom teachings of the Tao Academy. And they can all uh, lead you down this path of awakening. But one of the keys of training with a master teacher like myself is that you receive a consistency of blessings. Um, there are some that are signing up for my help. Oh, Awakened Spiritual Channels program, which in many cases releases all these blockages we're talking about, uh, not all of them, excuse me, uh, a good chunk of them. And because of the consistent daily practice that is suggested um, and the commitment that occurs when they book in a 12-week program, they literally level up and, and uh, create a situation where they sustain their level up. Okay, So you can learn more about that uh, coming to my website, Kristen. I'll I'll drop a link in if, you, if you're more interested in this uh, dedicated 12-week program to awaken your spiritual channel with your third eye and clear these kinds of blockages. So anyway, today we're going to work on the first two. This subject is actually a bit too big to chunk off in one uh, bite, so I will most likely, unless I receive information otherwise, uh, work with the first two which are opening the heart and releasing mind blockages. And then tomorrow I'll move into releasing spiritual blockages and listening and following soul guidance. We'll use this in two parts, okay? So opening the heart. We all have the heart center, heart chakra, 
And it does vacillate open and close, open and close. Uh, how many of you have ever taken aura picture, right? You know, you ever see the aura pictures? Uh, they have the, uh, the colors around your body. You could literally, uh, while you're standing in front of that camera or that um, someone that you put your hand on a device, but you could literally just change your thinking for a few minutes. You could think of something very, 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 very positive or something very, 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 very negative, and your aura colors would shift like 100%. Um, a lot of people don't understand it. They think that one snapshot of their aura is everything. No. We are souls that are always on a journey, and our energetic body is constantly changing, which is why we must always be the, um, the protectors and the, uh, uh, we must be very staunch and vigilant, protect our heart center. That does not mean never fall in love. That does not mean um, anything that you might think on the, from the mind level, okay? Don't go there. To be vigilant and to protect our heart center means to apply soul wisdom to both opening it, opening it and keeping it open regardless of what is happening around us. Do you think your creator closes his heart? Do you think that God, uh, uh, if, a, if a war happens in one area and there's 100,000 people that die, you think that God's heart closes? No, it opens more. So the heart is designed, the heart chakra is designed to continue opening. It's a never-ending lotus. But we, because of our mind, open our heart, close our heart, open our heart, close our heart. So that's where we're going to start. Okay, and that's why the practices on a consistent basis are so very, very relevant. Welcome also to Rose Williams. Welcome, Don Robinson. Um, thank you, everybody, for sharing. And uh, welcome, Anthea Murray. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to do a practice for heart opening. Let me check in a moment to see which one is the best. Okay, so we're going to use a specific hand mudra. So follow me with your hands. Touch your, your uh, pinkies together like this, okay? And then roll your palms over and touch your thumbs together. You notice there's like a cup inside your hands. So if you were to hold your palms in front of your chest, you could drop a cup in there. That's going to be your body power, your hand mudra position, okay? Now we're going to visualize in our heart center. We're gonna visualize heaven's light pouring in and clearing, block, just, like a, just like a golden stream of light. That's what we're gonna visualize. <clears throat> we're gonna chant the mantra, I love my heart and soul. Only those words, we're gonna, we're gonna repeat it. You'll, you'll hear the melody in a minute. It will follow the Love, Peace, Harmony song, but we're only gonna repeat, I love my heart and soul. We're just gonna keep repeating that, okay? And as we do that, I will uh, walk you through a visualization to, uh, to open your heart and soul more. Soul power is the fourth of the four powers, and it includes the body power, which is the hand position I just showed you, the mind power, which is the creative visualization, the sound power, which includes the mantra, I love my heart and soul, and the soul power, which we're going to do right now, okay? So everybody, we start by placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. Dropping the left hand in front of the heart center. This is how we connect. This is always a very good way to connect to heaven. <clears throat> left hand in front of the heart center, right hand gently pointed towards heaven. Close your eyes. And if it is comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear my beloved divine creator, my name is Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher. State your name three times. I would very much appreciate your blessings from all of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, from beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, from all the beings of light, angels, healing angels, and archangels. I would very much appreciate your blessings to open my heart center, to release blockages in my heart that keep me from releasing my mind and aligning and following my soul. I'm very grateful. Thank you. 
Uh, now, in our souls, you have a heart center. Let's connect to it. You're the soul of my heart chakra, my message center. I love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you. You have been so important in my life. You have allowed me to experience the greatest love and to feel that I am not alone, that I am surrounded by God, by my Creator, and by all beings of light. You have the power to more fully open. You have the power to release blockages. You have the power to remain open even in painful times. Do a good job. We don't say do a good job to God, but we can say do a good job to our own heart center, anything that's inside our body. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's change our hand positions to what I taught you again. It looks like this. Okay, touching the thumbs, touching the fingers. There's a cup, like you can drop a cup in, in your palms. You relax it in front of your um, front of your heart center. Do not push your hand against your heart center. It needs to be natural. Allow space. Drop your shoulders. Close your eyes. Visualize in your heart center golden light pouring in through the crown of your head, coming through your chakras down into your heart center. And then repeat with me, chanting, I love my heart and soul. Really love your heart and soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and I love my soul. I love my heart and soul. Truly love yourself. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and I love my soul. I love my heart and 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 soul, I love my heart and I love my soul. I love my heart and soul, I love my heart and soul. Now visualize your soul coming from heaven through the channel of light, coming to sit in the center of your heart. See it coming down bright incredible light coming into your heart center see how incredibly bright your soul is it responded to your love it is radiating huge love it is filling you with its lifetimes of great wisdom, 
heart wisdom, heart intelligence. And as we chant now, give your love to your soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and I love my soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and soul. Notice your soul as it stands there, radiant and bright. It has in its hand a staff. What kind of material is the staff made out of? Notice the power radiating from the staff that your soul holds. This staff can clear mind blockages. It can clear heart blockages. This staff carries with it all the power of all the lifetimes your soul has experienced. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and I love my soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and soul. Ask your soul, dear my beloved soul, I love you. Continue to repeat. Could you please give me a blessing to clear my mind blockages? I wish very much to align more to you, to follow your guidance. I wish to release ego and attachments, negative thinking, mindsets, beliefs. Dear my beloved soul, could you please use your staff to release these blockages? And so as we continue to chant, watch your soul as it raises its staff for each of you each of your staffs have very unique powers it could be very different for every one of you pay attention to what happens let us chant as your soul offers you this service i love my heart and soul watch your soul i love of my heart and soul. I love my heart and I love my soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and soul. Repeat after me. Continue to watch your soul and his staff radiate its incredible blessings to clear blockages. Repeat after me. 
Dear all souls, if I or my ancestors have caused you to have negative mindsets, attitudes, or beliefs, if we have thought or spoken, acted in such a way where you had severe negativity, complaining, and more, I sincerely apologize. If I or my ancestors created competition, ego, self-righteousness in you or your loved ones, by wrong teachings, wrong thoughts, words, and actions, I sincerely apologize. I ask most humbly for your forgiveness. I wish now to align to the soul, to the heart. I wish to release these blockages so that I can be a better servant. Please forgive me. I forgive you. And now watch your soul raise its staff very high. And on the count of three, see your soul slam the staff onto the floor of your heart center, blasting out the mind blockages. Three, two, one. Flash of light radiates out, clearing lifetimes of blockages. Now, again, three, two, one. Lifetimes of blockages in your heart center, releasing negativity. One more time. Three, two, one. Blowing out all of the blockages, radiating tremendous light out of your staff. The light is so bright you can barely see your soul anymore. Your heart center is blasted open. Negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, ego and attachments are being dramatically released. Great heart wisdom, soul wisdom, is coming in and replacing. One more time. I love with all your love, my heart and soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and I love my soul. I love my heart and soul. I love my heart and soul. Now bow your head to your soul. Thank you, my beloved soul. Please forgive me for not connecting with you more. Please bless me to continue to release mind blockages. Please bless me to continue to release ego and attachments, negativity. Please continue to bless me, my soul, to open my heart and keep my heart open. Please bless me, my soul, to hear you and to respond to your guidance. I love you, I love you, I love you. See your soul radiate. To yourself. It is always with you, but it is also always in heaven, so it can serve in both places. And as your soul returns, its essence remains with you. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very powerful experience, huh? Step one and two of a four-step process to 
release the mind and allow the soul to lead your life. Of course, it's important to do daily steps. But everybody, please, when you are ready, share. What was this experience like for you? Uh, share any third eye images you may have had. Vibrations, sensations, anything like that. And then I will read your comments. So uh, Kristen Strachan says, uh, beautiful and powerful beyond words. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Michelle Grant says, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Here's what I want you to really grasp. It's not just pretty song and thinking it. You have to understand that we are a soul. And so when we are inside, not outside, mind is outside unless we steer our mind to work on our behalf. You are in control of your mind when you tell your mind what to do. Most of our life is in reverse. Life outside of us is controlling our mind and it is helping us to make choices that we would not otherwise make if we were truly in alignment with our heart and soul. So when we do these practices, when we invoke the power of soul, we invoked the heart center, we invoked our soul, we invoked all beings of light to serve. All that were not busy came. They don't all come. Uh, certainly thousands come. And they serve. They serve because that is the nature of life. That is the nature of how you become an enlightened being, is through service, through oneness activities. That's why they come. They offer their love, their light, compassion, their virtue to assist you to level up and elevate. We, in this role, in this place here on earth, must maintain the conscious awareness that we are a soul. And that when we, uh, on a daily basis in this marathon, start to disallow the negative thoughts, start to ask forgiveness when we have one, and then offer forgiveness to those that offer us negative mindsets. Please offer forgiveness to those that give us the ego. Instead, we go inside. We honor our soul. We keep our heart open when something very unpleasant happens to us or around us. We stop responding with the mind. Oh, I'm the victim. This person will hurt me. I can't believe they left me. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying it's not painful. I'm saying that just like our creator 